I'm Scott Allen Miller, it's the 8th of June, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in León, Nicaragua, and today we're heading to the Hervederos de San Jacinto here in the Departamento León. This is the hotbeds of the volcanoes Talica and Santa Maria. It's gonna be an exciting one. It was a big surprise for us. We're gonna head out there right after the bump. If you're familiar with Yellowstone in the United States, you know about hotbeds, a lot of geysers, bubbling mud, and all those kind of things that tend to happen around volcanoes. Now, Yellowstone's not known for its active volcanoes, but it is famous for being a seismically active zone sitting on top of what is believed to be a super volcano. Yellowstone's pretty unique, but here in Nicaragua, we're part of the Ring of Fire, and we have similar things. A hotbeds here at the base of some of the volcanoes is actually a place you can go visit, and it was a big surprise for us. We had no idea that this kind of stuff existed here in Nicaragua. We didn't know it was close to us here in Leon. We didn't know how easy it was. And so Camille and I were told by one of our viewers, thank you so much for the suggestion that we should go out and check it out because Camille is addicted to volcanoes. So we took a morning and ran out there to see if we could go see it and we were successful. We're gonna bring you guys along with us. This was a lot of fun. It really was a cool trip, about 30 minute drive. This is us, we parked the car right here. Cami is just heading over. This is the ticket booth in green over here on the left. That's the actual public ticket booth. That archway brings you into the park itself with the hotbeds. Uh, very inexpensive, $2 for an adult uh, if you're an expat like us. And uh, you can park for a dollar, but the parking is private, it's separate. You could park somewhere in town, you could have a taxi drop you off, you wouldn't have to pay for parking. And this is the entrance going in. There's not too much officially there. Uh, it's, it's volcanic hot springs. So pretty much you have uh, some tour guides, some people who work there. There's a few huts, uh, a little observation building. That is the Volcano Santa Clara right there that we're walking towards. What a great view you have of that the entire time. It's fantastic. This is our tour guide that we ended up uh, working with. She met us here. This is what she does. Um, and uh, introducing us to her services. She's completely tipped. She says uh, she's a guide here mm -hmm. and a volunteer, but um, she says it's very uh, dangerous here and um, if we want a guide, she can come with us and we can tip her. Yeah, so it's completely voluntary is what she's saying, and it's uh, it's very dangerous. So it's important to have a guide, and she's completely correct. There's not a, not a story that she's giving us here. It is very, very hot, and you have to be careful where you're going to step. You have to be careful uh, where you go, what you do, um, and it's very easy to have an accident. It really is. Uh, and so she's showing here they make a lot of their money selling um, face masks. This is the volcanic mud. We're going to see that again later when they're collecting it and all of these are stones that are collected from the area this is quartz and obsidian that's coming up from the uh from the volcano itself so uh neat thing there's also some arrowheads and, and traditional stuff that they find in the area some some pottery uh so if you're interested in souvenirs or whatever that's how they make their living here um definitely take a moment and uh, consider purchasing something from there to help support them it's a very small family run uh, kind of tour business here, so important uh, to get some support. Oh, there's a thing up there. This is called Volcan Santa Clara. Ah, see. Sí. Santa Clara, yep. Santa Clara. And the other one is the Volcan Telica. We decided to uh, make use of having a tour guide and headed right into the park. On the right here is the Vulcan Talica. I was really surprised to find that there were dogs that regularly came in here and ran around the site because it's so hot. Uh, even in sandals, I found it really hot and I should not have worn sandals, I'll mention that. Uh, but the dogs are of course barefoot as dogs are want to be. And I can't believe that, the, I mean, obviously they can feel where it's hot and cold and they're, they, 
learn what to do, but that they even want to be there is, is pretty surprising. There is an old uh, dried up riverbed that comes through here. So there's a bridge going over. Uh, this disappeared some time ago, she was explaining to us uh, at one point. So you can see there, there's like this tiny little village, uh, kind of, I mean, that's San Jacinto, but there's more to the village. This is like the little tiny village just at the hotbed. Sulfur. Ah, I see. He's showing that's actual visible sulfur there on uh, the sides of the riverbed. So apparently the riverbed was here before the volcano kind of encroached on this area. And so a lot of what used to be here has disappeared because it's gotten much hotter uh, and there's been flooding both water and lava in the area. You can see that they have stones lining safe walkways here so you don't walk into areas because you can't necessarily see little tiny holes in the ground all over the place with steam coming out. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting. The big spots, you can see the steam rising there. You, you can't miss those, but there's little tiny holes all over. You can see the white crystalline uh, formed all over the place from the hot steam that, that seeps out. So if we were to step over just a few feet, a lot of that is soft, a lot of it is steaming, and you can be on very hard ground and still have steam coming out. You can really hear it. This is, you can tell how far away I am here, and that's how loud it was. You can see that some of the mud is wet. All of that is underground steam coming up. Any water, any moisture that you see is coming from underground. Everything on top of the ground is burned off. interesting to find these open vents of, of unbelievably hot mud just bubbling up from underground. And so much of it. I was really amazed at just the, the sheer volume of, of spots that are doing this. If you think that Nicaragua is hot, this is way hotter. I can feel the heat on my feet. Uh, it's over 100 degrees Celsius, over 212 degrees Fahrenheit coming out of the ground. So you can really feel it, uh, but it's all over the place. You can see we have a guide here and Kemi and I are here exploring at the vents and it's a really cool live bubbling mud field that you're just standing in the middle. And behind us is the volcano Santa Clara and Talica and some more in the other directions. This is really cool. I've never seen anything like this. I know that Yellowstone in the US has stuff like this, but this is pretty rare overall. And uh, wow, I was not expecting to find this here. Um, how hot is it? The sword is very hot, like almost burning hot. Yeah, I can feel it because I'm on sandals, which was very foolish. Don't wear sandals here, yeah. wear sneakers. That was much smarter. Yeah. There were lots of different mud fields and, and things to see. So there's these little paths that are kind of marked that lead you between them. So our guide took us from one spot Play, to another so we could see. It's a different color. I and see. Black is oh. Mineral. Oh, okay. Entiendo. So we can see the different areas. She was showing us that the, the light mud that he's collecting here, this is the uh, mineral mud that's common in face masks. The black mud area is the sulfuric, it's the smelly one. Uh, and it's, what, for whatever reason, it's not what they use for masks here. So this is what they do. They actually come out and collect the mud as it's coming up 
uh, and keep it liquid before it dries out, uh, then that's what they sell. Okay, we got caught in that a little bit in the steam. That is really hot and really stinky, but this is not sulfur. So the, she said that the black uh, mud over where Cami is, sorry, I'm holding multiple cameras, is sulfuric, and this over here is mineral. So this, this uh, kind of reddish brown, marron, uh, um, volcanic soil that's coming up here is what is collected and used for like face treatments. They, they sell it in bags here uh, and he's collecting it right now behind me because it comes up constantly every day. So they just collect it and sell it as face treatments. Here it's hot. See, yeah, very hot. Wow. Yeah, that's really hot. <laughs> I can't believe how much is bubbling up. The rocks are 250 degrees Celsius, so this is really powerful steam coming up. I had to be really careful because the camera would overheat so much faster than normal. You can tell we don't have a lot of sunlight on oh. this particular day. Yes, yes. But the heat in the air, this is a good 10 degrees yes. warmer than where we got out of the car. And if I got close to the vents, uh, as I leaned over, it was 30, 40 degrees. It was really, really hot. Now it wasn't, I wasn't standing in it, but I kept moving the camera closer than I was. The camera was getting really, really hot quickly. I could only record in little snippets. You can see about how close you stand. You can get closer. The ground is mostly solid, but it's, it's kind of dangerous. The coolest thing I saw in this got out of that was Kimmy saying that this is the best thing that she had seen in Nicaragua. She used to live here. All right, special thanks to our viewer who yesterday put a comment that Kemi was here and we should come out and see this because I had no idea this was here. And so I'm like, oh, hey, I heard that there's these uh, volcanic vents. We should go check it out. And she's like, absolutely. And if, if you hadn't put that comment, and sorry, I don't remember the name of who did it. I'll try to poke it up here uh, to say thank you. But I had just read it and said, yeah, I'll totally check that out. And here we are doing it. This is fantastic. This, this is worth a trip. If you're in Leon, this is really close, about 45 minutes away easy easy drive and uh for Amer for foreigners it's just two dollars to get in and then of course hire a guide because that helps a lot you're going to step on things and burn yourself otherwise so and there's lots to see and know so yeah this is cool thanks for giving us this uh this tip if you want to see oh we're going to see how hot this is <laughs> one of the few spots where it's kind of safe to touch it <laughs> this seems foolish it's bubbling. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's that's pretty warm. And it's only a few inches away from this, which is clearly much warmer. You can see right over here, it's bubbling into here and right here. So even just in this water, which you can touch, you have to be really careful to touch it far away from where it's collecting. If you want to see even more content from our trip here, uh, I was carrying two cameras the entire time and Camille is recording as well. I don't know where she's going to post her footage, uh, but we also have footage on our sister channel of Drive Warp, where you can see the drive from Leon, or from Talika uh, to San Jack, to San Jacinto, where we are. Uh, that's on the video where we drive to Hinotega. We'll drive past all this. So you can kind of see as it goes by. So it's just a short little bit at the beginning, but you can follow the trip. We also have this 360 footage, like where this shot has come from. And over on Nicaragua 360, I have some really complete footage taken in full 360 degrees of uh, some of our time there and with that you can look around and really get a feel for the entire uh, hotbeds and steam field and mud field um, all in one spot so that's I think that's pretty interesting of all the times we do 360s sometimes they're they're kind of like well it's neat to see around and get a feel for where you are but it's not that exciting and in this particular case I think that uh, the whole thing is is so interesting that seeing it in 360 uh, gives you a much better feel for how it sits next to the volcanoes and the road and how all this is laid out. Here she was showing me as I was trying to film, I kept burning my feet.
Este, nosotros estamos aquí ubicados en la comunidad de San Jacinto. Como pueden ver, esta zona de acá son pues respiradero de un volcán que tenemos al frente. Se llama Santa Clara. Si todas estas fumarolas en este lugar no estuviera, el volcán haría erupción, por lo que él por aquí él respira. Igual la temperatura que tenemos de la fumarola es 250 grados Celsius. En los agujeros de que uno no puede ver por las partes que están ahí por el suelo, si ustedes se paran es muy caliente. Por eso cuando el turista viene uno se les ofrece el guía porque el guía es muy necesario traerse. Más que es necesario traer el guía porque igual conocen historias de la zona. A few of our shots from this are also on my shorts channel. If any of you watch my, my regular videos and you've not taken the time to check out the shorts on YouTube, please do so. That really does help uh, promote the channel as well. And there is some different content on there or content at different times. Uh, most of that is shot with my phone. It's normally in 15 or 60 second increments, uh, but tends to come out much faster than these long forms. So this trip we actually did uh, several weeks ago and have been saving it to, uh, to put on a day when we finally had time to get it edited. Uh, so at this point, we're, we're headed back, um, going back over that river, heading back towards the car. Uh, I'm gonna be calling it a day. This is actually filmed the morning uh, that we then went to see. That was a bee that flew into the camera. That we kept, I don't know why insects find it interesting to be in the volcanic zone. Really surprised by that for sure. Um, but they would fly around the camera because it was pretty high in the air, so it was, it was in cooler air. And I kept getting these, these bugs that were like addicted to being on the camera and would follow it around. We didn't have them on us because we're closer to the ground and the air is not super hospitable. Uh, to air life. You can see a lot of the stuff there that used to be tables and things. That was so cool. It was amazing. That was way cooler than I was expecting. Yeah, I... like <laughs> mornings like these, whoa. <laughs> so we did, you know, when we saw it in pictures, it's like, ah, that, that looks kind of interesting. It's something we should do. But actually coming here and doing it, like those were super cool. You can't take pictures of that and make it. Yeah. Buen dia. You can't justify in pictures, or you can't make it like seem like it really is in pictures. You can't do it justice. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, I just want to show a little bit of this for people who want to do this. The logistics are not hard at all, but if you know ahead of time what to expect, life is really simple and not scary at all. So you come in on the main road, which is back there from Leon, or you could come the other direction from Madagalpa and Esteli, but assuming most tourists are going to come from uh, Leon and the village of Talika, you come up uh, Nicaragua 26 and you simply follow the directions. There's plenty of signs that lead you down here. We'll pop up on a map right now as I walk through the parking lot to show you. But you come upon the Parque Maribios. This is a private park and I probably something you wanna do. We did not have time. Sorry for the microphone. We did not have time to come do the Parque Maribios today. Uh, I wish we did, um, probably worth doing since you're here, but they own the parking lot here. So I'm gonna swing the camera around so you can see what it looks like it's got the welcome sign parking it's one dollar or 36 quarter but currently to park here so make sure you, that you are prepared for that not expensive and well worth it because you get to park in the handiest of spots i'll show you the street so you can see what it's like here you come down this nice big paved road And this right here is the entrance to the thermal spring. So this is the municipal park here. This is the private park here. Again, probably do both, but the thing you're here to see is this. This is the volcanic stuff, and it is $2 per person to get in, plus $1 to park. So assuming you have a car uh, and you have two people like us, it was $5. And then if you're gonna get a guide or you're gonna buy anything, because they sell quartz and obsidian and uh, arrowheads and uh, the mud for your faces, all that they sell inside, you can buy that. It's not gonna be expensive, but bring some money for that if you want. But more important, there is a tour guide and that probably is a good idea because you can hurt yourself very easily and she can tell you things about what's going on and the tour guide that we have I don't know that there's more than one she speaks Spanish natively and English pretty well so even if you're just looking for an English guide I think you'll be fine there she did a really nice job so bring money to tip her it is uh, a, you know a tip kind of thing so make sure at least 200 Cordoba I gave her 500 that's pro mine's probably high, but it was a bit of her time and we're the only people she had for a while. So that's an important part of her income. So don't be shy with, with 500 cord is fantastic. 
you just go through there once you've paid at the little booth right here just bring a little bit of cash certainly you can pay us dollars or you can pay cordoba everything is very easy and then you just walk around but be aware wear uh, uh don't wear sandals like me and uh, be prepared. It is very dangerous. So if you're bringing little kids, be really, really careful. Even if you're adults, it is so easy to step on steam vents and this stuff is hot. It will melt your shoes. It will burn your feet. You can do a lot of damage very easily. So this is, this is an area to be, take a lot of precaution, but boy, is this cool. That was insane. That was so cool. But yeah, it was, it was insane. And like to be there, it's like a crater. And you could see the volcano at the same time, but not be on it. And it was just amazing and cool. And that had to be easy. That had to be the best of someone told us to go do something. And it's like, oh, we've never heard of this. Like, I'm sure it's interesting, but how good can it be? Because so often these things are like, you know, okay, it's a thing to say. That was really cool. Like it was, it was authentically a super interesting thing that people should know about and make an effort to go see. And I've ne I've lived here for years. I've never heard of it. Yeah, I've never heard of it either. Which is, which is weird because it's so like it's such a, a special experience. It's such like an interesting thing. I don't know, but I'm glad. I'm glad. Thank you, YouTube <laughs> user, for recommending this because that was. He recommended good. it specifically for you too. Oh my god! Thank you. Like... I'm obsessed with volcanoes. <laughs> How did you know? Well, and that's really accessible from Leon. That was, uh, it's 45 minutes from the far side of Leon. Um, and I mean, if you were downtown, that'd be like, I don't know, 35 minutes or so easy drive, really cheap. Now you have to have a car, right? You can't take the bus here or whatever, but it's very simple to get here and very cheap to do only $5 for two people plus parking. Um, and like, really something special. So I, I can't believe that things in Leon aren't telling people about this. Like, I'm sure something is, but I've never seen, I've never seen the Department of Tourism mention it. And that's an official thing. That's not like, you know, it's not like a private thing that you're going to. That's the official government uh, park for the volcanic thermals. In any cases, I think people should definitely do the drive to go see that because that's just so different from what we usually see and what we usually do and it doesn't take a lot of time you go there for about an hour you're done and it was so cool and you're gonna remember it and it's not like much of an effort is what I mean we also got gifted these little mud bags and they're so cool I'm so happy we received this apparently this is very good for the skin and so I think I'm gonna try it tonight. Hopefully tomorrow you see me glowing. Um, yeah. All right, just gonna show a little bit as we go out. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott L. Miller. We have it there on the screen. Uh, just go there. You can put in a credit card, you just $5 or 10 coffees, $50, whatever you want to give to support. That's how we make this channel possible. Thank you so much to everyone who does take the time to support us. It means so much to us. It really has made a huge difference and lets us get out and do trips like this um, for, for you guys and for us. Obviously, it's a lot of fun. And for anyone who's looking for information on Nicaragua, it could be help with actual relocating or just getting on the phone and answering some questions. We offer services for all of that finding a house, helping to buy furniture, uh, getting your, your internet set up, whatever it is you need, shoot us an email, info at relocatenicaragua.com. We'd love to have a conversation and see how we can help you with your dreams of moving or long-term travel here in Nicaragua. Remember to like and subscribe, share on social media. Thanks so much for joining us. Get down in those comments. Let me know what you think of this episode and others, what you'd like to see, where we need to go, more recommendations, and we will see all of you tomorrow.